All right, so, okay, this is going to be a video on a question I received this week from Mary, many, um, Mary. So, <clears throat> and it's like quite an, an, a long question, so I'm going to mm -hmm. answer it. As I said, I'll try and answer it on camera. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, it's quite a long one with various parts to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey Sabir, thanks for these videos. <clears throat> I have a question about terms such as appropriate and discerning. I see them being used as alternatives to judgment, particularly in spiritual circle, circles, and I find myself wondering how they are meaningfully different. For example, here you say, the levels of consciousness are not better or worse than others, but certain levels are more appropriate. So just, so just to know that information is very valuable, she quoted from one of my videos. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to pick at your choice of words. It's something which keeps coming up for me and I'd appreciate some guidance. One response I've heard read on this is that you can see an error or mistake uh, in brackets discernment without condemning it. Okay, I'll stop there otherwise it, uh, I'll, I'll try and just talk a little bit on that. So, um, yes, I can see, I do, when I speak, I mean, I obviously I know what I'm talking about in my head, but uh, it can be misunderstood uh, uh, from many different levels. And often when I, I think this is useful to say, when I often speak, I'm speaking in a specific context to a specific situation mm. and to maybe a specific person who is relevant to that specific question. Mm. And I'm also able, which you can't see on camera, uh, getting a sense of their level of spiritual advancement so that the languaging I'm using um, can be and everyone registers information from their own level of consciousness so when I'm saying something it's also interpreted by each member differently and and also the, the level of consciousness will be will register something totally different so when you hear a video you can't sort of see the full picture of why I'm sort of using certain choices of words. Uh, and so there can be a lot of things. And, and I often talk about the different levels of consciousness and that at each level of consciousness, the perception of the world is very different. Like, um, and I, I, I also use the word appropriate. Uh, I'd have to understand the context in which I was saying that, but, but I can get a, a vague thing. Like, for example, if my dominant vibration is fear, then it's like I'm at, you know, I'd say I'm dominated by the fear of vibration and my perception of the world and the thoughts I'm picking up from that collective frequency of fear will be I'll perceive a fearful world and I'll be tending to have fearful thoughts around situations that are being registered. So I could, you know, so if I'm in the fear frequency, that's what's happening, but I could also be in um, a totally different uh, vibration. For example, I could be in, in, the, in the observer, you know, where I'm not the body, I'm not the thoughts, there's a feeling of oneness and presence and timeless, that, or the timeless now. And it's like everything is just a pure witness and there's nothing personal happening. So those are very different fields of, of thing. And so also the thing uh, uh, that I'm talking about appropriate, appropriate, I don't really like the word appropriate. Um, I might have used it, but I think appropriate is more, I sort of pick it up from the groups I go to, more like we, we let's all pretend to agree there's a norm in society mm. that one should react by. And let's say, well, it's appropriate according to our collective understanding of what's appropriate behavior. You know, it's, it's, like, it's uh, like if you're going to a group for recovering alcoholics, you know, you could say it's not appropriate to drink vodka in that environment, you know, so it's just, it's just not the norm for what we do in this, in this setting. Whereas, uh, you know, so it's, a, it's more for me, it's a linguistic thing of collective norms. And for me, it's not really, I don't really see it as a spiritual term, but I might use it in different contexts. More, I, I like the word, but everything is, everything, you know, what can be appropriate of a response from one level of consciousness can be very different to, a, to another level. I mean, that's probably how I used it. So, um, you know, when sometimes 
to um, respond in a certain way at a certain level. You know, the next lesson where you're at in your spiritual development can be, to, can be to do the opposite of another level of consciousness for what they view, what, which might be the same situation. Like, let's say, <clears throat> I just make up a situation and hope it works. Uh, let's say there's a fight going on. For one person, one person, you know, for where they are on their level of consciousness, they might be overcoming the idea of being a coward. And for their next growth to go to the next level of their development, level of consciousness, it might be right for them to intervene in that situation. The universe is calling them to intervene. For, for another person, it's just, it might be seen very, very differently as an unfolding of karma which needs no intervention. And therefore, it's just witnessed as something that's, that's happening. And the, you see, there's nothing to interfere, there's nothing to forgive. It's just the unfolding of the perfection of, of, of the universe. And anyway, so these are at different, different levels of consciousness. So in that way, I'm hoping to be answering uh, the difference in when I'm talking about different levels of consciousness. Um, appropriate, what is appropriate at any particular circumstance? Um, I often use the, you know, I often give the tools of uh, trying to get to spiritual discernment as opposed to giving an intellectual response or a therapeutic response to people by resolving or releasing any um, any sort of uh, emotions, negativity, or also through like A Course in Miracles or just handing over any kinds of thoughts which are colouring um, the situation. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, but certain levels are more appropriate, so, okay. I don't mean to pick your choice of words, it's something which keeps coming up, and I appreciate some guidance. One response I've heard read on this is that you can see an error or mistake without condemning it. Well, if you see an error or mistake without condemning it, that is a level of consciousness. At certain, le you know, like the Course in Miracles says, which is a very advanced level, you see at a certain level, you know, it's like, in the Course is saying in the early lessons, like, God is a loving which I feel of you. Just do that for everyone you see today. And then later on, it's, towards the end of the book, it says, with forgiveness, something along the lines, you realize there was nothing ever to forgive. So that's a different level of consciousness where you realize um, that uh, there is nothing to forgive and you don't even need to go to the process of forgiving. Um, also, your perception is very different. You know, at a, at a low level of consciousness, you see right and wrong and good and bad. You, set, you tend to see the world in a more dualistic, you know, like the person who stole the donuts is the bad person, and the person who got the donuts stolen is the good person. And, the, and what do you think should happen to the bad? Well, the bad person should be locked away and, uh, and punished because they did a bad thing which is wrong. Um, so you tend to have lower levels of consciousness. You sort of see right and wrong, good and bad, and punishment and judgment and it tends to be you know and it's okay to sneeze on camera I don't mind sneezes and things just to let anyone know uh, but, 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 but whole, 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 whole conversations whole conversations please not at this point but um, <clears throat> um, so yeah so you know the, the so when you're starting to get to high levels of consciousness there's much more of a forgiving and I would say sometimes it's more of an intuit, you know, as you get to the higher levels of consciousness, there's no head that tries to make a decision on things. Everything orchestrates out of the infinite. So, and also at the highest levels of consciousness, the words that come out, the actions that come out, there's no head saying, this is the right thing to do, this is the wrong thing. Everything spontaneously arises out of, out of consciousness. So, in middle levels of consciousness, you could say, um, you're in your head and you're having to pray and meditate and, and pray for an in, intu intuition or that divine clarity, that deeper recognition of what to do from a space before your thinking. If you're going to your thinking to try and think the answer out, that's, that's another level of consciousness, but that's going to the head. You know, is the right, th should I think, let me think about this for the next hour. Is the, the right thing to do this or that? So that's a head thing. Whereas if you're clearing and now you're getting more of an intuitive sixth sense thing, this is more of a spiritual discernment of what's the right thing. And people can get a different, every person gets their uh, connection to intuition that can be different. 
Some people might get a feeling, like an intuitive feeling. Some people might get a, almost like a voice. Some people might uh, sense that, uh, sense something in their body. Like they know when something is good, they might feel a bit stronger and they might feel a bit sicker when they think something's not right. Like, oh, oh I'll, I'll go and meet this person and everything just feels light and strong. And then you think, oh, you know, things come to visit today and you suddenly feel like your body goes weak and you start to feel a bit ill. So those are like, uh, those are like forms, different forms of discernment, which can be different for, for different people. I could do a whole video on the different types of spiritual discernment I've had, but that's not the question. Um, and your own response indicate whether you're judging another or discerning. <clears throat> so let me read that again. So I've, I've read on this, you can see an error or mistake discernment without condemning it. Yes, that's a level of consciousness. And your own upset or emotional responses indicate whether you're judging another. Yes, if you're in your head and you want to kill the person, then that is a, an emotional response. And you are, you are judging the person. At high levels of consciousness, you, you're getting more of a spiritual context, contextualization that there's nothing to judge. You also have a, a sense of the, the unfolding perfect orchestration of the universe. Uh, from lower levels of consciousness, you see good, bad, right and wrong, and it shouldn't have happened, and there's a bad person and there's a good person. As you get to higher levels, you see there's a more of a divine perfection orchestration of, of the universe. I like what Hawkins says, which is, you know, this is not heaven. This is not like, you know, we're not all angels. We're not supposed to be. We're not, this is like, uh, you know, one way to describe it, this is purgatory. This, we're all having fun in purgatory at the moment. So it's not meant to be like everyone on here is like St. Francis, you know, where we're all advanced forgivers. It's supposed to be a place of maximum opportunity for spiritual growth and also for plummeting down to very low levels. As you can go high up in this world, you can also go down very quickly as well. And it's, we're meant to have the diversity, and there's a divine orchestration. So at lower levels, it's seen like good and bad, and, uh, but at higher levels, in the witnessing, uh, there, there's a much more evolved vision. We, the Course talks about perception and divine vision. You know, as we're, going, as we're forgiving and forgiving, you know, and using our head less and less as more things are forgiven and resolved, your level of consciousness is increasing, and things are and the intuition or the, or you're going more towards spiritual vision. You're seeing as God would see, and you have the exercise like I see Christ in you, and I see Christ in you, or you are sinless, mm -hmm. even though you, you stole my. If someone stole my donuts, I'd say, well, I see Christ in you, and I see that you are sinless, and then your perception starts to shift. You go, actually, he didn't do anything wrong. Actually, you know, he probably needed the donuts more than I did, so whatever it is. So there's nothing to forgive. You don't want to kill them or, or hang them or call the police because you lost the donut. So those things, those things um, change. You're making a bit of a joke there, anyway. However, I'm not sure this really works in practice. I can think of many examples in the past where I've judged with no awareness of any emotion. I'm not sure I understand that. I'm not sure this really works in practice. I can think of many examples in the past where I've judged with no awareness. Yes, I guess that's true. You could have resolved, taken out a lot of your emotions and just be more in your head. So you're not really angry or feeling like you want to kill the person, but you just have a thought, like, uh, I judge you for having taken my donuts. So yes, that can happen. Um, in fact, I think when I was less conscious, I used to be more judgmental. Yes, that would be true. Uh, without any awareness that I was even judging, yes. Probably the emotion was more buried. That can also happen, repressed or denied. I do, I do talk about repressed emotions. You can have, in early spiritual work, you can say like, and I call these being frozen or disconnected from your emotions, or, or you could say dis dissociated states. So. Uh, someone stealing your donuts, but you're not in contact with any emotion. <clears throat> so in that case, I, you know, you, you just keep doing spiritual work and eventually at some point the emotions will come up and then you can resolve them when they come up later on. As I'm becoming more conscious, I am more aware of my judgments and increasingly feel the pain of that. There is a letting go and forgiving of myself happening in this, which then releases that pain. Excellent. But it's a process I'm in, yes? I couldn't use my own perceived experience of a negative emotion 
as a measure of whether I'm judging or merely discerning. Now, this is interesting. I couldn't use, so you're thinking that emo you need to process your emotion to get to discernment. I think that's what you're saying. I do, I do say that. I do sort of say, like, if you're in a lot of anger, fear, or shame, or guilt, if you can allow those to release uh, and clear them all out and release all, any thoughts with the story, your spiritual intuition will be clear. So if you let the I want to kill the person thing go and forgiven them, so there's no story, and if there's lots of anger, or if you sit with that, so if I'm feeling angry at a person and I'm in, a, in my head, like they're bad, they're bad, I'm a, and I'm feeling anger, then my level of consciousness is very low. So, uh, and so if I take an action, it'll be from a low level of consciousness. I'm taking the action from anger and being stuck in my head. So m my actions and my thinking will be at that level of consciousness. And when you take an action from, let's say, fear, and, and I, I see them as bad, when I take an action, my, my strategy and my way of dealing with it will be from that vibration. Now, uh, Hawkins has written a book called Power Versus Force. Uh, if you understand that book, you realize that when, you, when you're coming from your ego motive with an individual, uh, I think what Hawkins said is very interesting. There'll always be a pushback, even if not immediately. You know, if I'm like angry at a person and I want to be right and I want to put them in their place, um, when I, even if I win and they agree, there's always going to be a, an opposite reaction from the universe, either from them directly, but I'm trying to push the universe and control the universe and I'm putting that energy of force into the universe and the universe will always respond back with counterforce at some point. So when I'm putting in my aggression and trying to control something and put that energy out there, uh, quite often you'll feel it immediately. If I try and say, I'm right, you're wrong, and just admit you're wrong with that kind of energy, they'll often fight back because it's coming from that energy of I'm trying to, I'm in fear I'm try, or anger, I'm trying to control you. So if you come from, if you resolve it with forgiveness and you have only peace in your heart, and, and you, it's like your words are orchestrated from this place of peace and oneness. And there's no, energetically, when you have that conversation with the individual, there's a much greater potential for the miraculous to happen. Because you've resolved all the trying to tackle a problem from the, from the place of force. I don't know if that makes sense. So you're tackling the problem from the levels of power. Once you're in like peace, acceptance, love, unconditional love, or the observer of fields of oneness, then you have, um, there is now power, and there's a greater likelihood for the miraculous. And uh, Hawkins described this on one of his uh, lectures with, um, and this is probably not a good example, but I like the example. He, he, he met a rattlesnake, and he went into a state of enlightenment within a split second. And that rattlesnake, if he'd stayed in fear, like, you know, his first thought, like, shall I kill the rattlesnake, shall I kick it? You know, uh, but he went straight into oneness and bliss, and this field of infinite love presided in the area. And then this, the snake had to stop and was mesmerized in this field of love and oneness. So that would happen if you, you know, if you went to, into a field, you know, there's a greater likelihood of the miraculous happening because the, the love is so intense. Whereas if you go in like this is a battle, I have to win. Um, the orchestration is from a much lower vibration uh, level of consciousness. So, um, okay, so I'm just carrying on reading. I think that could be very messy misleading. Is discerning what's appropriate about identifying lessons for each person at their level? Yes, that is what I'm saying. Um, at each level of consciousness, uh, the lessons are different and the, um, the discernment is different. You know, what you do at each level. It's like the universe is always trying to get you to grow to the next level and to discern things, to forgive at a different level. Sometimes it's to forget, you know, sometimes, you know, there are different, there's different lessons in each encounter and you have to discern. And your discernment, will, and then as you, as you, it's almost like as you pass that test spiritually, you'll get your next thing to resolve at the next spiritual level. Which is why I mean everything is context related to the individual and what they're going through and their level of consciousness. 
So, what is necessary to evolve or raise my own level of Not sure I should presume I can decide that for another. Yes, uh, well, it depends. I mean, really, each, you know, each person is uh, making their own spiritual discernment with each situation that arises. But it is good to have a spiritual mentor who knows you and your story. It is good to spiritual groups because, why? Because, you know, if you have a spiritual mentor that loves you, um, they can often see things and give guidance, spiritual guidance, where your ego is blinding you. And also in spiritual groups, you have the grace of the energy of the group. You know, in spiritual groups, when two or more are gathered in the name of, of divinity, enormous power is unleashed because we're all coming together in the name of connecting to, to the infinite. So in those groups, where your ego might be seeing a resentment or a difficulty, in those groups your consciousness is elevated to a higher level and the, and the group wisdom comes to you at a higher level and so things can be resolved much more miraculously in the group field. Uh, this is the whole basis of why spiritual groups are, are very, very powerful or having spiritual mentors are, are, is a very, very helpful thing. <clears throat> Any wise words. So I hope that's been of help, and if not, just give me another YouTube comment, and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, thank you.